Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I was like charging the document. So we're going to start with this uh, with this uh, session. We are in session number three of this um, of this week. That is also number three. So we are almost uh, done with this week because um, tomorrow we are going to have the last uh, session. So we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday, um, that is the simple past. Así que vamos a continuar eh, hablando de algunos elementos del pasado simple, eh, because um, we were talking about uh, the positive sentences and negative sentences and some of the elements that we use uh, to create sentences in simple past. And also we were like talking about uh, the irregular and regular verbs. Uh, you have your um, PDF documents in which you are going to find the list of verbs that you are going to use, not only in simple uh, past, but we are going to use them uh, in our daily conversations. So now we are going to continue with that part because we have information about um, how to create questions because that is one of the elements that we didn't work yesterday. And now we are going to uh, end the topic of the simple past. Así que en esta sesión vamos a terminar lo que es el tema del pasado simple. Um, vamos a terminar con otro de los elementos. Ya tocamos eh, las estructuras positivas y las estructuras negativas. Y ahora vamos a hablar de lo que son las preguntas. Uh, we are going to see how to create questions and all of that things. So, we are going to continue with that part. But give me a second. So, we are going to talk about how to ask questions. That is the part that we are going to perform right now. So we are going to see the document and we are going to begin talking about questions. And in this case, it's not like we are going to have um, a lot of different information uh, to use when we're uh, talking about question because in this case, you know that we are going to use almost the same elements Eh, for the structure. Vamos a utilizar casi los mismos elementos de una oración simple para eh, crear preguntas. So in that case, we are not like, have a lot of information about questions. And then when we end the, the information about questions, we are going to see some examples. We are going to create some examples uh, with irregular verbs. So in that case, we're going to have like different sentences. Um, so we're going to put into practice the information that we have about the irregular verbs. Vamos a ver una serie de ejemplos con los verbos irregulares. Y vamos a... Simplemente vamos a verlos cómo se construyen, ya siguiendo toda la información que tenemos. También vamos a hablar de las yes, no questions. And uh, more information about uh, the use of did. And also we are going to have like um, some examples of uh, sentences using did. And then we are going to have a, an exercise. We are going to have an exercise. So we're going to begin with this part.
So the thing is how to ask questions or how to ask a question. ¿Cómo hacer preguntas? Porque no lo podemos redundar, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo preguntar una pregunta? In this case, ¿cómo hacer una pregunta? So, in this case, the formula for asking questions in the simple past tense is did plus subject plus root form of the verb. So in this case, we have some examples. And we have did, and we're going to continue using the name of Juan. Did Juan win the gold medal or the silver medal. Next one, where did Juan go to celebrate? Did the judge Decide fairly, in your opinion. So in this case, we have three different questions. And if you can see, uh, we have two questions with did and one question with WH word. Tenemos dos preguntas con el auxiliar div, que es la estructura que estamos utilizando. Pero también tenemos una pregunta eh, con una WH word, que son esas eh, palabras que utilizamos para hacer preguntas. ¿Se pueden utilizar en este contexto? Claro que sí. We can use questions with did and we can use questions with WH words. So we have three different questions and the first one said, did Juan win the gold medal or the silver medal? Ganó Juan la medalla de oro o la medalla de plata? Where did Juan go to celebrate? ¿A dónde fue Juan a celebrar? And did the judge decide fairly in your opinion? En este caso es preguntar, ¿verdad? Si los jueces decidieron de una manera eh, buena en, en tu opinión o fue una buena decisión. When asking a question with the verb to be, you don't need the auxiliary did. When we are using the uh, verb to be, that in this case is was and where, we are not going to use the auxiliary. In that case, you are going to use the verb to be in past. Cuando tengamos el verbo to be en pasado, ya no vamos a utilizar el auxiliar. Aquí vamos a utilizar el verbo to be para hacer la pregunta. So we have the formula. And this one is was or where plus the subject. 
And then you are going to uh, write the complement. So we have some examples. And you have here, was Juan in a good mood after the contest? And where people taking lots of pictures so in this case you have the verb to be at the beginning of your sentence and also um you are not going to use the auxiliary because it is not necessary Teacher, tell me. Entonces, que comprenderíamos que para el verbo to be, el was, el where, no vamos a usar en ningún momento el auxiliar, solo serían para los otros verbos. Exactamente, para el was y el where no es necesario utilizar auxiliares, porque ellos mismos están creando o, o están haciendo esa función eh, de especificarnos que estamos haciendo una pregunta en pasado. Así que con el El verbo to be, en ese caso, no vamos a utilizar eh, auxiliares. So, when we make a yes, no question with a verb in the past tense, we need to use the following sentence pattern. In this case, we are talking about um, close uh, questions because you know that we have two different kind of uh, questions. We have the close and open questions, but in this case, we are going to talk about just um, open questions. Vamos a hablar de preguntas cerradas, donde nosotros vamos a responder sí o no. That's it. So in this case, we are going to uh, talk about like make some examples in which we are going to see uh, the different uses of do and did that is in past because we are going to talk about that situation. So, when we make yes, no question, with a verb in the past tense, we need to use the following sentence pattern. So we're, we're going to make like a comparison between the present sentence and in the past sentence or the present question and past question. So let's see some examples para hacer una pequeña comparación. So, we have here, do you like candy? Do you like candy? And this one is a present question because you are using do to express your idea. Do you like candy? Te gusta eh, o te gustan los dulces? Es una oración o una pregunta en presente. Then we are going to have a, a question in past. Did you like candy when you were young? Did you like candy when you were young? ¿Te gustaban los dulces cuando eras pequeño? Then we have another question in present. Does she go to the gym every day? 
Ella va al gimnasio todos los días. Or in past, did she go to the gym yesterday? Ella fue al gimnasio ayer. Notice that a present tense questions like this begin with do or does. And past tense questions begin with did. Past tense questions like this always begin with did. So in this case, when you are using a um, close question, you are just going to use did. But when you want to have open questions, you are going to use the WH words. Aquí tenemos que ser eh, o tener en mente lo siguiente. Si quieren hacer preguntas abiertas, ustedes van a utilizar las WH words. Van a utilizar las preguntas que lleven what, when, where, why, how, and how come. Porque ahí sí estamos exigiendo una respuesta. What is your name? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? And we answer with our names. Where did you go? ¿A dónde fuimos? And we are going to explain the place and give some details of the information that they are asking. But when you are just uh, wanting to have a short answer, you are going to use the auxiliary did. Because in that case, you're just going to say yes, no, maybe, and I don't know. Short answers. Did she go to the gym yesterday? Ella fue al gimnasio ayer? Maybe. Yes, yeah, she did. No, she didn't. I don't know. And we have that kind of uh, short answers. Así que preguntas abiertas con WH words, preguntas cerradas con el auxiliar did. So we're going to see some other examples using did. So we're going to remember the, the formula did plus subject plus verb. You know that we are going to add the complement and the question mark. And it says that remember that the verb in this question does not change to past tense form. And why? Why we're not going to change the verb? Because the past tense is represented by the word did. This is the past tense of do. Another thing that you need to remember when you are using auxiliary verbs, you are not going to change the main verb of your sentence. Because in that case, the auxiliary is giving you the information about the tense that you are using. Así que cuando utilicemos los auxiliares, nuestro verbo no cambia de forma. No se le aplica la regla de la tercera persona. Tell me, Tatiana. Eh, una pregunta. Lo, ¿Todos los auxiliares cuáles serían? En este caso usted puede tener would, could, did. Eh, you can use also must. There are different auxiliaries. Aprox mm. Un número aproximado? Um, no, oh, no. I remember that in English we have a lot of words. Tenemos muchas, muchas eh, palabras en inglés, pero en este caso, um, we can say like, mm, we have Base, basically, o lo más básicos, four, six, like ten, son como diez. Podemos decir que son como diez los más básicos. Y de esos también dependen otros. O sea, como que, por ejemplo, en el verbo to be, lo podemos utilizar a veces como auxiliar. Y puede ser el am, is, and are, pero también el was y el were. O puede ser el being, el, el, el be able. Y todos esos entonces como que de unos dependen otros. Entonces los más básicos podríamos contar como unos 10 o 15. Ah, oh, bueno. Gracias. You're welcome. 
So in this case, eh, we are just using did. Ese es el auxiliar que estamos utilizando acá. No estamos utilizando los otros, pero sí tenemos varios auxiliares. Y también depende del, del, del tense que estemos utilizando y del, de las fórmulas que estemos utilizando. Porque este, o sea, los auxiliares básicamente ayudan a otros verbos. We have a main verb and this auxiliary help that verb. So in that case, we can have different, different auxiliaries. And in this case, we have the verb to be that it can function as an auxiliary um, with different, um, like a form of the verb. Porque el verbo to be, ustedes saben que tiene diferentes formas, entonces las diferentes formas del verbo to be pueden eh, funcionar como auxiliares. We have can, cool, we have do, in, in this case did, eh, also does or doing can function as auxiliary verbs. Different form of have, las diferentes formas del have, como el had, el has, el having, eh, my, uh, might, must, shall, should, will, and will. So in that case, we have different uh, auxiliaries with some uh, variations. So in this case, cuando tengamos los auxiliares, porque el auxiliar es el que nos va a ayudar a nosotros también con el verbo, ya él mismo lo dice. If I have uh, the auxiliary in past, I am not going to change anything in my main verb. Así que si yo ya tengo mi auxiliar en pasado, ya no es necesario que yo ponga mi verbo en pasado. Si yo ya tengo mi auxiliar aplicando la regla de la tercera persona, que es agregarle la ES, IES o S a los verbos que utiliza el he, she, and it, mi verbo ya no va a cambiar, ya no le voy a aplicar esa regla porque el auxiliar ya está tomando esa función. So, in this case, we have some examples of this structure. And we're going to see the examples. Sure. Did you eat breakfast this morning? Did you eat breakfast this morning? Second one, did it rain last night? Did it rain last night? Did you go on a trip last weekend? Did you go on a trip last weekend? Did they attend university together? Did the store give you a discount? So we have different uh, questions here and we have the number one. Did you eat breakfast this morning? Comiste tu desayuno esta mañana? Did it rain last night? Llovió anoche? Did you go on a trip last weekend? Fuiste a de viaje um, la semana pasada? Did they attend university together? Fueron a la universidad juntos? Did the store give you a discount? La tienda te dio un descuento. In this case, remember when you are like translating the words, translating the phrases or translating questions, it is not necessary to translate every word. No es necesario que, que traduzcamos todo paso por paso. Eh, porque sería un poco mm, raro, ¿verdad? Eh, la manera en la que nosotros traducimos palabra por palabra. En este caso, we need to um, try to understand what is the, the exact meaning of the sentence. You can translate all the words, but you need to make 
an analysis in your mind about the context of the sentence. And you can use simple words, short phrases to express the idea of the question, the idea of the sentence, or the idea of a paragraph. Because in that case, you need to sound more natural and not like a robot. If you can go to the translators, they, um, in some cases, they translate every word and it sounds kind of weird, but you need to make sense of the words that you are using. Así que no es necesario que eh, a la hora de traducir una oración le pongamos todos los elementos que tenemos ahí. Lo podemos acortar y darle un sentido más natural a las frases y preguntas que estamos eh, haciéndole la traducción. Porque va a sonar un poco extraño que lo digamos exactamente como se traduce. So, we're going to continue. And it says, since these are just no questions, you can answer with short or long answers. And we are going to see some possible answers. Vamos a ver algunas posibles eh, respuestas a estas preguntas que pueden ser cortas o largas. But in this case, it's more, eh, it's like most common to create short Answers. Vamos a hablar de las, de las respuestas. And we have three different. Yes, three different examples. And then we are going to see the negative ones. We have yes. So in this case, we have a question first. We have a question. Did you go to the concert? Did you go? to the concert and we have the answers. Yes, I went to the concert. Then we have, yes, I did. That is the most common. Yes, I did or in this case, yes. But that one is not like uh, the best option because in that case it's like you are sounding kind of unpolite. Si solo respondemos sí, estamos sonando como un poco pesados eh, y como que no queremos contestar. So in this case, it's not the best option. So in this case, if you can see in the first answer, we have like the use of the verb that um, we are using to the um, to the to the question, but in this case we are using the verb in past. But in the short answer, we just use the past tense of the verb did. In las respuestas largas, o en este caso, en la respuesta larga que acabamos de dar, estamos utilizando el verbo go but we are using it in past. Lo estamos utilizando en pasado. But in the short answers, solo utilizamos el pasado de do. Solo estamos utilizando did. And now we are going to see negative answers. Ya vimos las respuestas positivas. Vamos a ver respuestas negativas. Teacher. Tell me. Este, acabo de ver el primer ejemplo donde dice, did you go to the concert? Uh -huh. este, cuando vamos a responder, tiene que, tenemos que responder con el verbo en pasado. Yes. En este caso tiene ah. que responder en el verbo en pasado porque el auxiliar le está diciendo que usted está utilizando una pregunta en pasado. Entonces no puede responder uh -huh. en presente porque no concuerda con los tiempos. Ah, uh, entiendo. Uh -huh. okay. Así que en este Thank caso you. sí tenemos que, como que ponerle atención a los auxiliares. En este caso, did. Si el, la pregunta yeah. empieza con did, usted va a responder ya sea una, una respuesta larga como esta, pero utiliza el mismo verbo que tiene en su pregunta, que es este, su main verb, que es go, usted lo va a transformar a went, que es el pasado. Went. Uh -huh. okay. mm. Y usted responde, yes, I went, sí fui, porque como le está preguntando si usted fue al concierto, sí, fui al concierto, o oh, yes, I did, sí lo hice pero en pasado. Tiene que concordar los tiempos. Ok. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
You're welcome. So in the negative answers, we have another question. That is, did he study art in school? Did he study art in school? ¿El estudió arte en la, en la escuela? O estudió, simplemente estudió arte en la escuela. And we are going to see the answers. Vamos a ver cuáles son las respuestas. No, he did not study art in school. Is the long one. No, he did not study art in school. No, he didn't. In this case, we are using contractions. No, he didn't study art in school. No, he did not. That is the short answers. No, he did not. Or, no, he didn't. That is the contraction. And the last one, no. Just simple. Now I'm going to write some examples of questions, but also I'm going to write some example of a um, positive sentence and negative sentence in past. So we're going to begin with questions. And then we're going to see positive sentences and negative sentences. Examples. Question. Vamos a ver diferentes preguntas en pasado. Did he study business at university? Did he study business at university? Él estudió negocio, ¿verdad? En la, en la universidad. Did she do a good job? Did she do a good job? Hizo un buen trabajo. En este caso no es necesario que digamos, hizo ella un buen trabajo sino que podemos decir hizo un buen trabajo como una pregunta para no agregar todos los elementos. Did she have a headache yesterday? Did she have a headache yesterday? Did she go to, to a good university? Did she go to a good university? Fue a una buena universidad. Did it snow last night? Did it snow last night? Nevo anoche. Did it work? Funcionó. Did the presentation go well? Did they pay back their debt? Did they pay back their debt? Pagaron su deuda. Did they change their minds? Did they change their minds? Cambiaron su, 
cambiaron de parecer en este caso, no es simplemente cambiaron su mente, sino cambiaron de parecer. Did the children have fun at the amusement park? Did the children have fun at the amusement park? ¿Se divirtieron los niños en el parque de diversiones? Did I do a good job? Hago un buen trabajo. Did I win? Gané. Did I forget something? Did you like the movie? Did you have a good weekend? Did you major in biology? Did we finish all the work last week? Did we finish all the work last week? Did we decide on our plan last meeting? I mean, decide. Okay, so here we have some examples of questions. Ahí vamos a tener esa lista eh, de preguntas eh, que podemos nosotros utilizar eh, con esto de el did, del auxiliar did. So, I'm going to write, in this case, I'm not going to, to do a long list of eh, positive statements or negative statements. I'm going to write Just 10 sentences eh, positive, 10 negative sentences. Solo 10 en positivo, 10 en negativo para terminar con los ejemplos. So, now, positive. Vamos a ver algunas oraciones en positivo. And we have, he met his wife six years ago. Él conoció a su esposa hace seis años. Next one. I graduated from the university. They watched a movie yesterday.
you went to the you went to bed early you went to bed early she studied in the library she is studying in the library They had dinner last night. They had dinner last night. He felt sad yesterday. We made a cake for you. The police found some clues. And the last one, I became a teacher two years ago. So in the positive statements, we have he met his wife six years ago. Él conoció a su esposa hace seis años. I graduated from university. Me gradué de la universidad. They watched a movie yesterday. Vieron una película ayer. You went to bed early. Te fuiste a la cama temprano. She studied in the library. Estudió en la, librería, en la biblioteca. I mean, they had dinner last night. Ellos cenaron anoche. Uh, he felt sad yesterday. Se sintió triste ayer. We made a cake for you. Hicimos un pastel para ti. The police found some clues. La policía encontró algunas pistas. And I became a teacher two years ago. Me convertí, me hice, me volví una maestra hace dos años. And now we are going to see the negative sentences that are the last ones. Son las últimas, eh, los últimos ejemplos. ¿Qué vamos a ver sobre este tema? Negative. So, let's see. In this case, let me see. I'm going to write... Um, just eight examples and I'm going to use all the, um, the subjects or all the pronouns that we have. Yes, I'm going to do this once with the pronouns. Voy a hacer esta solo con los pronombres. Voy a utilizarlos todos. Para que veamos también el uso de los, um, de los pronombres. So, I, I did not start. I mean, I did not start my homework. You didn't talk to me. He did not buy food. She didn't cut her hair. It did not play with the ball. We did we didn't read the book. You did not play the guitar. And the last one, they, I mean, they didn't study for the exam. So 
So in this case, we are using all of the pronouns that we have. Tenemos todos los pronombres o todos los sujetos que utilizamos en inglés. So, I did not start my homework. No he comenzado o no, o no comencé mi tarea. You didn't talk to me. No hablaste conmigo. He did not buy food. Él no compró comida. She didn't cut her hair. No cortó su cabello. He did not play with the ball. Él no jugó con la pelota. In, in this case, we are talking about an animal. Estamos hablando de un animal. Eh, we didn't read the book. No leímos el libro. You did not play the guitar. No tocamos la guitarra. And they didn't study for the exam. No estudiamos para el examen. In that case, you can see the word play. We can use play for, um, um, I mean, Podemos utilizar play para jugar en play para tocar un instrumento. So in that case, we have two different options. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about um, one positive statement, one negative statement, and one question with past or simple past. Vamos a pensar en una pregunta, en una oración positiva y en una oración negativa. And then you are going to write your examples on the chat and we are going to read them. Así que vamos a escribir una oración positiva, una negativa, una pregunta en el chat y luego las vamos a leer. Utilizando obviamente el simple past. Y ustedes ya tienen sus, um, sus verbos en el documento PDF. So you can use uh, different verbs. So let's begin with your uh, exercise. So I'm going to give you, I mean, five minutes. And then after the five minutes, I'm going to read the examples. Después de los cinco minutos, voy a comenzar a leer los ejemplos. So let's begin.
one minute more and we are going to begin reading the uh, the examples that you have on the chat un minuto más y comenzamos Okay, let's see. We have here, I study on the weekend. I study on the weekend. Very good. And the second one, I did not. In that case, uh, you need to use not. I did not study this morning. I played football yesterday. I did not study in the morning. Did you work yesterday? Did he work in the restaurant? I work on the weekend. I went shopping on Sunday. Did you do your homework yesterday? I did not. Remember that when you are using the auxiliary, you are uh, making negative statements. I did not do my homework in the morning. I went to the beach with my family on Saturday. Did you have a good day? She danced at the party. I did not do my homework yesterday. I didn't work yesterday. Okay, very, very good. Thank you. So, for the last part, I have um, another exercise, but in this case, it's a writing exercise. And I have like an image uh, with uh, some words. Tenemos una imagen con algunas palabras. But let me stop this one because I need to show you the image in which you have the elements that you are going to use for your exercise. En la imagen tenemos palabras, I mean, this is not there, eh, que vamos a utilizar para nuestro ejercicio. And in this case, we, we have just five minutes and I'm going to explain the exercise. And you are going to do this exercise for tomorrow, but you are just going to um, write like a paragraph, van a escribir un pequeño párrafo usando los elementos que aparecen en la imagen. And if you are going to read it tomorrow, la vamos a leer mañana. And I'm going to do it uh, myself. I'm going to do the exercise myself. And I'm going to read my, um, my paragraph first, and then you are going to uh, read your paragraph. This is the, the image that we have here. And this one is past simple tense, writing. Este es el, el ejercicio de escritura. And you have a lot of words there that you can use to your paragraph. Tenemos esa, esas palabras ahí que podemos utilizar para nuestro párrafo. Yesterday, a very tiring day. Wake up at 7 a.m. Go to the bakery. Buy bagels and bread. Prepare breakfast, start doing housework at 8 a.m., bacon and mop the floor, dust the furniture, clean the windows, wash the dishes, do some ironing, take out the trash, do the laundry, cook dinner, go out uh, to the garden, feed the dog, water the flowers and trees, mow the lawn, wash the cars, get into the house at 6 p.m. and take a nap for an hour. And we have like the statement, what a tiring day. En este caso no es una pregunta, sino es una afirmación. Qué día tan cansado. Y tenemos ahí todos esos elementos que nosotros podemos incluir en nuestro párrafo. Que es como una lista de cosas que esta persona ha hecho. En este caso es David. Eh, lista de cosas que él ha hecho en el día. So, in that case, you are going to like organize all the all the ideas 
Vamos a organizar todas las ideas in a paragraph. And tomorrow we are going to read the paragraph that we have. Vamos a leer el párrafo eh, al iniciar con nuestra sesión mañana. Voy a leer primero el mío para que empecemos con el uh, ice breaking, con el eh, romper el hielo, ¿verdad? Con el párrafo. Ahí tenemos ya todos los elementos. No es necesario que ustedes eh, digan, ah, I need to write another thing. But in the case that you need to add something, you can do it. But in this case is to make a whole paragraph using all of those elements. But also remember, you need to focus on the tense. Tienen que enfocarse en el tiempo y tienen que pasarlo a pasado. So that's the main thing with this writing exercise. Tienen que pasarlo a tiempo pasado para que concuerde con lo que estamos haciendo. But you have like uh, the word yesterday, so you know you can um, begin with that. For example, you can say um, yesterday was... A very tiring day. Ayer fue un día muy cansado. And then you can explain all the things that David do or David did during the day. So en ese caso van a explicar las cosas que David uh, hizo ayer en el día. What are the activities that he performed yesterday? So that is the, um, the exercise and also Tomorrow, we are going to complete the different exercises that we have in the section number four. Mañana vamos a resolver los ejercicios de la sección cuatro para ya eh, terminarlos y los que no han hecho los ejercicios puedan resolverlos um, al mismo tiempo mañana y completar su sección número cuatro porque ya saben que el último día de la semana tienen su revisión de progreso. So, yes, yesterday, I mean, tomorrow, we are going to complete the exercises on the section number four, and we are going to end with the topics that we have for this week. And now it's time to say goodbye because it's a time to end the session. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last se uh, session for this week. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.